I have all these beautiful strawberries that I bought in town and I'm not ready to use them. And I know, look at him, look how big he is. He's as big as my palm of my hand. <laughs> He's huge. And if y'all are like me, I'm sure, because strawberries are notorious for it, aren't they? But you get them and you're gonna use them in a few days and you gotta get them out of your refrigerator and they've already got mold on them. And so you gotta go back to town or I have a million times. So what you can do uh, is wash them and and I know they say don't pre-wash your strawberries until you're ready to use them and that's true. But you can wash them in a vinegar bath mixed with water, four parts water, one part vinegar, just some white vinegar, and you'll be surprised how much longer they will last in your refrigerator. So let's mix us up a little batch of these strawberries. Y'all know what I want to do with these? I want us to make some strawberry jam together. Okay, so we've got four parts water and one part just white vinegar. Doesn't have to be anything real expensive. And I know this takes some time, you know, a little bit of time, but uh, it's worth it because then you don't have to run back to town and get your strawberries again, <laughs> like me. There we go. Y'all see now they're in a nice bath, and I'm just kind of kind of stir them a bit, just a little bit, make sure everybody gets some vinegar. What that does, the vinegar actually um, kills the bacteria that's on the outside of your little strawberries, and then it... Um, keeps any from growing while you store them back in your refrigerator um, and that way they don't mold on you quite so quickly. You'll be surprised. Um, you let them soak for 20 minutes and then I'm going to put them back in the colander and I'm going to rinse them really well. And do not worry, they don't taste like vinegar whatsoever. That totally evaporates off of there. Um, but it just takes care of that bacteria on the outside of them. And then I love the little containers that they come in because they're um, they've got all these little holes in them where it lets air circulate on them. So I'll wash these out really well while these are soaking for 20 minutes. And then after I wash them and rinse them, I let them drain really, really well. Or you can pour them out on a towel. I just let mine drain really, really well. And then I'll pack them back in here. And like I say, you'd be really surprised how much longer your strawberries will last just because that vinegar um, cleaned them up so well. So um, y'all do that with your strawberries next time and see if that helps you get them to last a little longer. Oh my goodness. It's one thing to have one camera going and all the stuff that goes wrong, but then when you have two separate cameras going, it's just amazing to me. Um, anyway, y'all on Facebook have been watching me this whole time, but my um, YouTube camera um, clicked off. So guys, we are making strawberry jam. <laughs> um, and I know y'all already know that, right? It clicked off. It said that my um, SD card wasn't formatting and that SD card's been in there one million times. So, you know, okay. <laughs> anyway, I have fresh strawberries that I bought um, a week ago. Okay, it was way back during the week. This is the weekend. And I know y'all already heard this, I'm sorry. But um, I washed them, and I'm going to put my little video in here. I'll insert it next while the jam is cooking. And I washed them in a vinegar water. And I'll, I'll put that in there, show y'all how I did it. And y'all know, if y'all bought strawberries, two or three days you go to use them in your refrigerator, and they've already got um, the little mold, fuzzy little mold growing all over them and you're like, oh, you know, I know. Is that what y'all do? Oh, I do too. Um, anyway, so you wash them in this vinegar water and y'all see I'm, I'm, de I'm de stemming my strawberries and I'm also using my little spoon. My little cereal spoon is what I call it. I guess a teaspoon or whatever. Just your smallest little spoon you eat with and you can take it and you just take the tip end core out of your strawberry Showing again because I know my one camera had not been recording for me. And you take that out. And so what that does, it, if you're slicing the tip end of your strawberries off, you don't end up with near as much strawberries, okay? I mean, seriously, look at that. I mean, it's hardly anything that I took off that strawberry. 
So it leaves me all the strawberry. When we're making strawberry jam, we want all the strawberry, don't we? And then I use that spoon just to go right in there and slice that strawberry in half so we can get it started. But anyway, the reason why I'm making this strawberry jam is it's a traditional jam that goes with scones or scones or scones, depending on where you live. And here in America, we just say biscuits. <laughs> I don't know how we took it that far off the beaten path, but we did. But anyway, um, we're going to make those later as well. But today is all about the strawberry jam for it. And I'm going to do the old time traditional jam, which means no pectin. I'm not going to let pectin um, help me. Um, not because I'm afraid of pectin. I use pectin in my jellies because when I'm making jelly, I have massive amounts of my fruits or my berries. And I don't want to get all of that canned and sealed and then my jelly not set. So I do do that for insurance. Yes, I do. Um, did y'all see how big that strawberry was? He was as big as the palm of my hand. Look at him. Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> anyway, this is what I'm doing. I'm basically just taking the tops of my strawberries off and getting them sliced in half. And we'll see how many we have, how many cups we have. And then we will go from there and I'll get y'all over to my stove and we will um, make our jam. But I'm doing this because um, Back two winters ago, my son and I, my youngest son and I, John Tyler, went to Europe. I keep putting the wrong thing in the wrong thing, guys. And um, he and I enjoyed scones, or scones, like I say, in Europe with some clotted cream, which is like heavenly. It's one of, it, I guess it's the best flavor I've ever had, besides cream cheese. I'm still partial to cream cheese, but anyway, um, and so I'm wanting to, to redo that just as a memory of Europe. We went to Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and London. And we flew back out of London home. And um, it was a wonderful, wonderful trip with a lot of the school kids and teachers and some staff and friends here in, in our parish. And it was just a great time and we really enjoyed some good food. And this was one of them. So anyway, I'm wanting to get this done so maybe we can make some scones. And I'm also going to make blackberry jam with y'all, but I'm going to do two different videos just in case somebody wants to just know about one jam. Anyway, I'm going to get off here and I'll come back on here when we see how many strawberries we have. thought of one more thing. I started telling y'all we were going to make the old-fashioned with no pectin. And the reason why I want to do that is if you use it without the pectin and you make it use its natural juices, it does take longer to cook it down to make it use its natural pectin, that is. But it turns out a softer set than if you use pectin. Now, when I'm making jelly, I don't mind that. I don't mind it being set. But when you're making a jam, I like it to be easily spreadable on that biscuit or that toast or that scone. So um, that's why I'm doing that. Plus, when you don't use pectin, you have to cook your, your um, fruit in the juice longer. And it cooks down and so it tends to be a deeper, richer color of your jam, which means more flavor, right? Exactly. And it almost gets a caramelized flavor in it. And I love caramel. I love that caramelized flavoring. So I love the old fashioned. But like I say, I don't do that on my jelly. I've got massive amounts. This is just because I've got a smaller amount so I can take out that time. So I'm not saying anything gets pectin. You wouldn't believe how much pectin I use <laughs> during the year, especially the summer, the jelly months. So, um, I'm just saying on this particular one, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go old school. Do y'all notice something that's changed about me? <laughs> ah, y'all did notice that one really well. Is this one of our friends on here, Beth. She lives in Georgia. I'm not going to say her last name because I don't like to exploit other people on this page. But she sent me this and she made, had this made out of mine and John's face. And it is just, it's hilariously cute, isn't it? <laughs> Anyway, I put it on because that, I was thinking he got on a white shirt. I mean, strawberry juice. Seriously, seriously. 
But anyway, I put that on, but there's something else different in this video too, since I was just on here, besides my apron. Can y'all tell? Can you tell? I love those little games to y'all. I'm going to give y'all a hint. Um, hmm. It's behind me. I don't know. It's to this side of me. Giving you a hint. Giving you a hint. John wasn't in the room and now he's sitting over there. So he keeps looking over here. But he wasn't here to see what it looked like before. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway, I'm about to get through here. Y'all just keep trying to figure out what it is that also changed in this video. Uh, I love that kind of game. Do y'all? Which one's different kind of game? I like that. Makes us think and concentrate, doesn't it? I'm about finished with my strawberries. Y'all see I'm just using that spoon to go on and chop them in half too. And it seems to cut a little less off the top when you're using that spoon. So I love that. You just have to be careful. I've washed these real good and I don't want to get any of those leaves back in here. He's so big, I'll chop him again. Okay, guys. All right, time's up. This is what changed. I started y'all off in a little four cup container and it got too big, so I had to switch that out <laughs> while I wasn't on here. <laughs> they were like, okay, Amy, get on with the jam, right? <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to get y'all moved over here. Seriously, though, Beth, thank you so much for this. Y'all always send me sweet little gifts, and I really appreciate you. And, and you and I know what you went through just to get me this, <laughs> which is a whole other show, isn't it? So thank you so very much. It's extremely sweet of you, and I'll cherish it forever. I really, really will. Me, <laughs> um, I've got a big pan, and I don't know how many quarts this is. Um, I don't guess it matters. Just make sure you got one big enough to put your strawberries and your sugar in. We ended up with seven cups of strawberries, and I normally like eight cups and six cups of sugar, but. Um, it just didn't work out that way, and it's okay. So we've got seven cups of strawberries that we were preparing over there. And now we have five cups of sugar. And I did not measure it in here. I know this is not a sugar measure, but um, I just dumped one cup at a time over here so to have our five cups of sugar. But if you've got eight cups of strawberries you would use six cups of sugar okay and i know that ratio may not be the same but that's another thing when you're using a um no pectin jam you don't have to use as much sugar because we're going to cook it down longer and your sugar will concentrate in there um so you don't have to use quite as much sugar for instance if i was making strawberry jelly okay i would use eight cups of strawberry juice to eight cups of sugar okay so you see we're we're cutting down a little bit right <laughs> okay guys and another thing that's really good to add to your jams and jellies is some lemon juice and i love fresh lemon constantly but this concentrated lemon juice is more consistent with its acidity and and how it will react and and help your pectin to set up so um i've learned that you can just use this and be just as good. And you've always got this in your refrigerator, so you don't have to go cutting into a lemon, and we can just concentrate on our strawberries. Okay, y'all. And right now, what we're going to do, I turned the fire on. I don't know if y'all saw me fiddling around, turning the fire on. We're going to let these strawberries cook down. And, of course, I'll come back on here periodically with y'all. I'm not going to make y'all sit here the whole time with these strawberries juicing and cooking down. I'm going to let you see what they look like to begin with. Something I saw that um, I'll just use for us to talk about, something we can discuss. I guess I ought to move it up on my face. Huh? That drives me crazy. I'm like, look at me, look at me. Somebody's trying to tell me something. Let's see here, guys. See if I could manage that without toppling everybody. <laughs> Where are we? Here we are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get us up here. There we go. Um, something that I noticed on one of my other videos just recently was uh, I, lots of us get on there and we're so sweet and wonderful to one another. 
And then every once in a while you get that one that says something ugly. And they always, they always love to say, you talk too much. <laughs> hey, get on with it. You're talking too much, you know. And my first reaction, of course, is, well, just scroll past me. You don't have to watch me, you know. And I've actually said that a couple of times. And y'all all jump on there to my defense. And um, I appreciate y'all jumping on there because, honestly, I'll post a video, and it may be days before I can get back on there and see how it's going or how y'all are liking it or anything like that. So, um, but anyway, this particular time, y'all see John behind me? He, uh... He's been working on the farm, and he came in and took him a short little nap. He's over there, and um, <laughs> he probably don't want to be on camera right now, so I'll try to keep him covered up. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I'm getting back to, um, it was one of my recent videos. Somebody came on there again, you know, and said, you're talking too much. Get on with it. And it, I know what it was. It was my vinegar, my boosted vinegar video. I'm stirring my um, strawberries, guys. And they said, oh, I was talking too much. Well, I was telling y'all what each and every individual ingredient did for you. And um, so I thought, well, goodness, you know, I don't know how I'm supposed to cut that off. But anyway, first thing I said was, and I left it on there, too, to be honest about it. I said, I am so sorry. I, uh... I'm sorry that you don't enjoy our conversations because y'all do, lots of you do, and y'all talk that with me, and I love it. But I didn't say all that. I said, I'm so sorry, and I'll be sure and ban you from our page, meaning our page, because this isn't my page. This is our page. And um, then you won't have to bother with us anymore and listen to all our discussions. And then... And I, I posted that, I did, and then I said, and I thought I was being nice, I really did. But then I thought about my pastor, um, Robbie Lawson, and he's been preaching to us about these times and how this is a good time to let God's light shine through us. And it was like, God was like, Amy, is that my light shining through you? <laughs> and so I said, okay. <laughs> So then I got back on there, and, and someone told me this years and years ago, and I've learned it, and you see it, and y'all know it too, it's not a revelation, but that hurting people hurt people. And obviously when somebody gets on there and says an ugly, um, negative comment, you know, something that we're all just up here having a good time and laughing about, it's because they're hurting. And uh, so then what I messaged her again was that, um, and I left that, I left it all on there so everybody could see. I didn't ban her. I didn't ban her from our page. No, I didn't. I just told her that I had learned years back that hurting people hurt people, and so I actually put her on my prayer list, and I actually prayed then and there for God to please touch her, be in her life, and help her to feel his love and my love and our love. And maybe if we just love people like that, that gives us the opportunity for God to shine through us and show um, show what we're really made of, our core. And that's what Brother Robbie has been preaching to us. He's saying these times during COVID and, and all that goes on in all our countries, and y'all know especially in our country, right, that um, it's a good time for us to show what we're made of and show... God through us and let him shine through us so um, he had the little tap on my shoulder and reminded me of Brother Robbie's sermon Sunday and I said okay okay so anyway I'm just telling her I love her just as much as I love all y'all even though she's not quite as sweet as y'all are <laughs> and we're all going to love on her and uh, maybe maybe she'll be sweet to us huh Kind of like the Grinch huh? at Christmas time. Don't they be nice to him? Then all of a sudden he's nice. So we'll see. We'll see if that. But anyway, I just wanted to let y'all know what happened. What what happened is I remember Brother Robbie's sermon. I did, and so um, we're gonna let God's light shine through us, and we're gonna love on her. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm gonna put y'all back down here. I'm gonna put y'all right back down here. I'm not even gonna turn my camera off. Okay. Let's see. Here we all go. See, I've been staring around. They're looking good already, aren't they? 
I'm like, well, Amy, here on YouTube, we don't know. We wouldn't know, Amy. Let me make sure y'all are lined up really well. Yes, I like that. And you're pretty good as well. There we go. Okay. Okay, guys. And what I'm going to do, I wish y'all could smell this. I tell you, I really do truly wish they had smell-o-vision. This smells like strawberry candy. Oh, it's beautiful. And y'all, I'll insert that video. Y'all have already watched it now about how to wash your strawberries in that vinegar water. And I, that's something I want to tell y'all. When I did, it made the smell of those strawberries just come out just so beautifully. Oh, my goodness. Um, it just brightened them up, just the smell of them once I had soaked them in the vinegar water. Um, Y'all see what I'm doing? I've got them on about medium heat, and I'm going to let them begin to boil and break down and release their juices and all that good stuff. And I love to use my potato masher, and I'll come in here once they do that. I'll let it get going good, and I'll start mashing all these strawberries up. And like I say, I'm going to let it cook a while. I'm not going to put pectin in there, but I love the deeper, richer color it gives the strawberries. And I love that caramelization um, taste that it gives them. So um, so anyway, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit yakking here, and I'm going to come back to y'all in just a little bit. Y'all see it's coming to a boil. And you do kind of need to stay near it because when you do a long cooking jam, it's going to start to get sticky around the sides and it might tend to want to try to start burning on you but it's also going to be caramelizing as long as we're stirring it um, you don't have to continuously stir but just be close to it kind of you know be, be babysitting on it um, i want to show you how because when we're doing a long cooking jam we don't know how long it's going to take our particular fruit to set for us with no pectin um, added to it so um, what I want to show you is the different stages. Like right now, it's just juicy. Y'all see how it's just running off that spoon? Hang on. I know all y'all couldn't see that. Hang on just a second, I'll show you. It's just running off this spoon real easy, not trying to sheet or drop or anything just yet. Just sugary juice. Looks delicious though, doesn't it? All right, we're gonna let this go. Don't let it boil over either. So that's one thing you wanna stir, kinda of stir it back down. And if it keeps on like it's gonna boil over, just turn it down a bit. Your fire down just a bit, okay? And let it go like that. And something else I wanna tell y'all, if you're not just watching it like this, um, something for temperatures, if you wanna put a temperature you want to test it to see if it's going to set. I tend to do that, but then I also test it the other ways. So I won't, I won't be left without a setting jam. I'm trying to stir this down, guys. Hang on. Let me turn it down a little more. <laughs> I needed my bigger pot. Y'all see how you need a huge pot for this? Huge, 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 huge pot. Anyway, I'm going to give you the degrees. And I'll also put this, want to let y'all know, in my um, YouTube video channel in the description box I will put the recipe and I'll put all the temperatures and how you can gauge it and watch it um, I'll put all of that and you'll be able to just print that out and go on and make your own jam huh okay all right so yeah the degrees we're looking for is um, let me get my let me get my fire turned back up just a little bit. Okay, guys, sorry. The degrees we're looking for is 220 degrees Fahrenheit or um, 104 degrees Celsius. Um, so uh, that's what we're looking for. And I don't just go by that. See, we're at 215, 213. I don't just go by that because sometimes I've done that and still maybe not set quite right or something. So I've, I kind of just double check, double check, double check. <laughs> so we're going to let this cook for a while. 
and I'm also going to let some of my juice reduce down and you'll be able to see on the edge of the pan it will reduce down and that's going to give us that deeper richer color and a bit of that caramelization taste that um, nice deep flavor on our jam so I'll be back and I'll let you know when it's said and done how long I let mine go but yours will possibly be different Okay, y'all, I'm really not trying to play the game of can you see what's different, but can y'all tell what's different? <laughs> I had to go to a bigger pot. Yes, I did. I got tired of having to babysit it and kept wanting to boil over, and I knew better than that, but I gave it a try anyway. That's what I do. I'm a stubborn thing, I guess. So anyway, I've got it in this big tall pot so I can let it boil because you need it to boil a bit so it can reduce, you know. So um, I went on and put it in a bigger pot pot and I'm taking my potato masher and I'm just mashing my strawberries up here to make our jam to make it jammy and I'm gonna let it cook and I'm gonna let it reduce down like you can see the line of where the juice is here and I'm gonna let it reduce on down I'm just gonna watch it I also have some blackberries and normally I love to pick these during the summer on our farm they grow all over the place but I bought these in the store because um, it's the dead of winter. <laughs> so anyway, um, I washed these. I did these in that vinegar wash as well, okay? I just want y'all to know that. So I've got seven cups. Same thing. How in the world did I manage seven cups of strawberries, seven cups of blackberries? I don't know. I don't know how. And to that, I'm going to add four cups of sugar to these blackberries, okay? Blackberry is my favorite jam or my favorite jelly. I love that flavor. I mean, love it. Again, I'm going to put some lemon juice to, just to make sure it reacts and helps that pectin that's in the blackberry set. Since we're not using a, any added store-bought pectin, huh? So I'll put a couple of tablespoons of my lemon juice. Just like that. And... I noticed last year, um, speaking of picking blackberries on the farm, I noticed last year that they just didn't make like they do other years. So I, don't, I don't know. That was weird. I guess some years are just better than others, like crops and all of that stuff. huh? So anyway, um, this year I hope they do make well. It just depends. It just depends on the weather, I guess, and all sorts of variables. And... Um, we can go picking out there together is what I was getting at. I'll take y'all out there and show y'all some of my, my favorite spots. You just look for spots that kind of are watered well but then stay drained. I don't know. They just, you can't even plan where they're going to grow well. They'll just decide where they're going to grow well. Of course, y'all know I love this because it's purpley. <laughs> I know, I know. And I'm going to make this jam, too, so we can have it for biscuits and toast and um, scones or scones or scones. I don't know which one to call it. Can y'all imagine me doing a scone video? How many times I'll have to say that? I know. I'll drive some people bonkers. Why not? Isn't that a beautiful purple color? <laughs> I don't know what purple does to me, but it's... It literally changes my mood. Isn't that crazy? Just crazy. Okay, guys, y'all see these need to be juicing away. And I am stirring on these strawberries over here. I know y'all can't see my strawberry pot anymore because I've moved y'all across the stove. But I'm stirring on them. I got them to a nice rolling boil in this taller pot. And now I have to put my blackberries in the shorter one. I know. Um, but anyway... Once they did that, I've actually turned the heat down a good bit on here, and I'm just letting it do a bubble. Just a little bubble, 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 and I'm letting it reduce down. You can tell it's condensing down because the side of your pot will show one level, and it's lower because I like that darker, darker level. I see. I need to get over here to these blackberries, don't I? They said, ouch, ouch, ouch. Get over here to us. Pay attention to us. I know. I hear y'all. Let's get our juices flowing. Mm. <laughs> and I don't know why it is, but the traditional thing to go with scones is strawberry. But I love blackberry. Love that flavor. Um, of 
course, I love the wild blackberries that I pick out here on the farm, but these in the store, they're pretty good too. They are, they are. So I'm going to start cooking them just like I'm cooking these strawberries, guys, okay? The same thing. When they go to getting real juicy, I can start mashing them up. Matter of fact, I will right now. I know I'm loud. I beat and bang in the kitchen, don't I? I know. That's just me. I'll start mashing these up too with my potato masher. Oh, how beautiful. I said I wasn't going to can any of this, and it's going to end up being a good bit. So I don't know, guys. I don't know if I'm just going to put them in jars in my refrigerator and give it away to my kids and stuff, or if I need to can it. I don't know. If I do, that means i got to walk down to my canning kitchen and get some jars and some tops and get them on the boil. Y'all ever do that? Think you're going to do something real quick and then it becomes a major project? <laughs> well, at least I'm not alone. I flipped y'all back over to this side of my stove because this strawberry, um, I hope y'all can see on the edge of the pan pot, you see how much it's condensed down there and um, concentrated. And I want to show you a few different little tests you can do. Um, one is your temp temperature like I had told y'all and this is getting up uh, at least 220 Fahrenheit and what did I tell y'all the Celsius but I'll put that on my YouTube description box but yeah it's getting on up there pretty good and another way that you can test is also how it sheets off your spoon. Remember earlier it was dripping. See if it starts falling in any sheets. Okay, you see how it's starting to thickly drip like that? Okay, that's a good sign. But the one test I love to do that works really, really well to me, let me get my plate, is this one. This one's like a no fail test to me. You can take some of your um, jam juice here and put you some on a plate like this. Okay. Put another dollop. Put a nice amount here. And I'm going to go put this, I'm going to go place this in the freezer, okay? And then I'll show you from there what we're going to do after one minute. It's been one minute and y'all see this mixture. I got it back out of the freezer. Now you can take your finger and just run down through there and see if it if it's able to separate like that for you. That's a real good indication that you're at gel stage, okay? Just like that. And looking at this, I went on and turned my heat my fire off you see it's still bubbling but y'all see how far down that res reduced I mean inches at least a couple of inches if not close to three inches and I want you to see how deep and rich and dark it is one thing you can do is you can skim this foam off the top um, if you want to John loves it on there he says it reminds him of his grandma's jams and jellies because she left that foam. Because I'm going to go and tell y'all the foam tastes great. <laughs> it doesn't hurt a thing, so we don't try to waste it. Um, let me turn my blackberry jam down over here before it gets away from me. Alright, give it a stir. Um, so anyway, y'all see this. I've got some jars. I was just going to pot or uh, put this in jars for the refrigerator to give away, but I see it might be a little more, so I think I may go on and can them, and you'll see he's cooling off. I want y'all to see how deep and rich and dark this is. I hope y'all can see that. It's beautiful, and that's what I mean about um, condensing it down. It gives it a, a darker color, and it's much um, deeper flavor um, than if you just get it boiling and put some pectin in it and jam it up. It's it's totally different flavor and it's a little caramelized and I love that. So okay, I'm going to let this cool a bit. I'm getting my jars going back here. Let's see guys. 
all my canning stuff's down in my canning kitchen. Duh, I guess it would be, huh? So I've got me some jars just <laughs> sitting here. I feel like the old days when I didn't have me a big old canning pot. But um, I'm going to get my jars boiling there for 10 minutes so they'll be good and sterilized. And then I'm going to pour my jam up in there and put my lids on and let them seal. And um, that way everything will stay nice and fresh for us until we do make our scones and our clotted cream, right? Yes. I don't know, can y'all both see over here? I think y'all can a little bit. These are just now beginning to boil and I'm gonna continue to mash on them. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing with my blackberries. I'm going to let them condense down greatly and get nice and thick. Right now it's just, it's almost just soupy right now. See that, it's just soupy. It's soupy and runny. It smells good and it tastes good because I tasted it already. <laughs> but we need to let it get very well gelled is what we're looking for. I poured up my jam just so I, I don't know, I might can work with a little easier right here to show y'all. Y'all see how gloriously deep, rich color this jam has turned out. Mm. It is so wonderful, and like I say, it has a caramelized flavor to it when you do that. So if you don't want it that way, you don't have to do it. All my canning stuff is down in my canning kitchen, so I had to break out old school stuff, just some tongs and one of my, just my little pots. <laughs> just do a few little cans at a time. I've got big canning uh, pots down there, but anyway, we are going old school. I don't even have my funnels up here, so I'm trying to, I'll just have to clean my jars a bit. This summer, I'll get y'all down in my canning kitchen and we'll really do some stuff. So I'm just gonna be very careful and show you how beautiful this is. Beautiful. You wanna um, bring it all the way to the top of your jar, okay? Um, just with about a quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch head space. You don't, when I say all the way to the top, I mean all the way. You don't want just a piece of a jar or half a jar because it may seal for you and then it'll pop back open later. So it just wants a little bit of head space. Um, okay, now I will take, even when I have my funnel in here and know the outside isn't dirty, but I will take a wet um, napkin, okay? clean and I'll go around this edge. Woo, this jar is some kind of hot with that hot jam and this hot jar. And I will just spin him around like that and make sure I get that clean, clean. And then I've got me some lids. I just went on and dropped them down in here to get over here with y'all. All right, lids, let's behave. Everybody wants to see y'all in action. Now I'm using my tongs. lace it on there and then I've got my lids over here too my little screw on lids hot 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 it is I will use him and when you're canning something you just want it to be finger tight okay guys like that you don't want to really crank down on it and after it seals you can take this ring off. I don't, I leave them on there, but you can. And after it seals, please do not crank again or try to tighten anymore, because then you could actually break your seal and all of that work will be in vain. And we don't want that. Do y'all see how beautiful that is? I'm gonna raise these cameras up so y'all can see how pretty it is. It's starting to get dark outside. It's a gloomy, rainy, yucky day here. So I said, may as well cook cook us some jam for our scones we're going to make later in our clotted cream. You see how pretty? Just beautiful. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to keep on. Y'all see I've got, I got a good bit more of this, huh? This yielded actually four or five, maybe, yeah, about five cups of this, so that's great. And like I said, if you don't like the foam, you can just skim the foam off the top, but John loves the foam. He said it reminds him of his grandma's. <laughs> and um, so anyway, guys, I'm gonna keep up. Y'all see this? Y'all see our blackberry over here is looking good, isn't it? 
it's still nice and juicy so I'm letting it condense down just like we did this strawberry and I told y'all I would let y'all know how long that strawberry went honestly no more than about 30 minutes actually so it's not doesn't take near as long as maybe I made it sound you know it wasn't like hours or anything okay so somewhere around 30 minutes that it got that condensed on the strawberry all right guys I'm just going to stay at this and get all my strawberry jam in these jars and then I'm going to get on to my blackberry <laughs> Now our blackberry jam has reached 220 degrees. You see how it's condensed down from the side a good bit? Look how beautiful it is. I just think it's gorgeous. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use a plate, a saucer. I'm going to put some on here. And I'm going to put it in the freezer for one minute. Okay, guys? And we'll be back. Tell everybody what I, what I think. It's been one minute in the freezer, and I just take my finger and I run it like that. To me, it'll run back on itself if I let it. And I'm not, I'm not quite satisfied with that, so we're going to go a couple of more minutes and we'll try it again. Alright guys, I did it again. I put some more, I let it cook for about two more minutes and I put some more on a plate. Put it in my freezer for about a minute, okay? And we will try it now. Let's see here. And yeah, this is going to, that's what I'm looking for where it doesn't fall back on itself whatsoever. That's what we need right there. Okay y'all. We're going to jar this too. Yes, we are. Y'all see, um, I had cooked it a couple more minutes. I knew it was going to do better that time. And so I went on and poured this up while I had that sitting in the freezer. And it looked nice and pretty. Mm, and it just smells divine. It truly does, guys. I'm going to... Scoot it over. Let's see. I really want y'all to be able to see this. I know. I know. Let's see here. 
There we go. Okay, y'all. And I'm just going to um, jar this. I wish one of my little jars would pop because they've been a popping and sound beautiful. Beautiful of our strawberry jam. All right. Color jars. Y'all hear Jax? It's about dark, so he has to start barking like, like boogers come out at dark, huh? <laughs> did not get me a clean little napkin to wipe with before I came over here, but I'm going to. I'm going to do all this and do just like I did on the strawberry jam, and I'll show you what it looks like as soon as I get through. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm back. I got them all done, and they're all sitting here on the counter so pretty. I just want to show y'all what they look like. This is the strawberry. And this is the blackberry and they're so beautiful and they're so warm still and they're over here popping and making pretty noises and sealing for you don't look at my fingernails they're not pretty but anyway um I love to take pictures of my jelly sitting out in the sunlight because then the Sun can shine through it but it has gotten dark on us so I need to start supper now <laughs> um, but anyway I just wanted to show y'all and what I wanted to tell you was Get them back in the right order. I haven't labeled them yet, though. Um, it made for us five, I believe these are half pint jars. Y'all don't, don't chop my head off if they're not, but I believe that's the half pint jars, I think. But it made five of those and five of the blackberry. Isn't that crazy? So. Anyway, I wanted to tell y'all how much it yielded, but I promise on the YouTube video, I will make sure of the size of the jars so I can tell you in the description box how much it yields also. So now I'm going to start on supper. John and I, um, we always like to eat steak on Saturday nights. So I'm fixing to get us some steaks marinating. <laughs> 